recording this meeting also. Has joined the meeting. So this is the second meeting that we are having with the advisory committee. Um, today is December the 8th. I'm going to go ahead and um, review the agenda for tonight. So in a bit, I will go into the introduction. Um, then we have some design scenarios that we would like to share with you before and after pictures of the um, Liberty Court Shopping Center. Then we're going to get into a Q&A session. We have experts from the county here to answer your questions. We're going to get into a discussion about architectural um, materials and colors in, in detail. I will share the next meeting date and then um, let you and hear if you have any further questions. Um, the, um, I would like to take attendance. So as I call your name, if you are here, please unmute yourself and say hi or anything you wanna say. Kelly Carter, I know Kelly is not here. She has emailed me. Shirley Sufik. Hello, I'm here. Hi, Sheila, not Sheila. Oh. Sheila, is Sheila here? Okay. Miss Mildred Owen. I'm here. Hello, everyone. Hello. Good. Devon Park. Mr. Aaron. I am here. Good evening. Good evening. Bill Wood. Marta Nathanson. Yes, I'm I'm here, Gone, and joining me for LifeBridge also um, are Nolani Juan and Marian Navarro. Great, thank you all. Okay, thank you. Justin Gozmo. Cicely, I know Cicely was not going to be able to make it. India, Artis. I thought I spoke her name. India, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. <laughs> Sheila? I'm here right now. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Stephanie Hobman? Pat Duffy? Jamelia? Hello. Miss Linda, was that Janelia? So it was. Hi. Hi. Miss Linda Dorsey? Uh, here. Thank you. Danielle? Danielle Smith? I'm actually contacting. Danny Blount? I'm contacting him too. Okay. Bishop Berry. Come here. Hi. Hi. Mr. George White. I'm contacting three of them. Okay, thank you. And from the county, I believe Mr. Julian Jones is here. Councilman Julian. Uh, from the Office of Community Engagement, we have Kirk Michel, Mr. Yes, and Michelle Bernstein. Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. 
And from um, the zoning office, we have Jeff Perlo. I'm here. Hi. From... I know. Good. We have Jim Herman. Good evening. My pleasure. Hi. Good, e good evening. And, um, you have... From the Department of Public Works, Sam Sneed. Thank you, Link, and Danny and George as well. Jesse Bilek. All right, it's got more. Daniel Allen. From the Department of Economic and Workforce Development, we have Jessica Normington. Hi, all. Hi. From the Department of Environmental Protection and Sustainability, we have Pretty Odin. I'm here. Hi. Hi. And Kerry Oberholzer. Hi. Hi, Kerry. And the okay, of planning. Daniel Allen, my mic was muted. I'm sorry. Daniel Allen. Hi, Daniel. Hello. Danny, I've met some people. Hi. And Department of Planning, we have various staff Amy Mente, Christopher Weaver, Miles Mulherberger, Sheng Kwan, Books Phelps, and myself, Ngonejo. So I want to welcome everybody. And I'm going to ask if you would like to mute yourself, please, so that we can enjoy the presentation. Thank you all. So last meeting, we heard a lot of ideas, a lot of suggestions from you. What we did, we tried to put those ideas um, into um, the shopping center. We picked one shopping center, the Liberty Port Shopping Center, and we tried to depict your ideas by creating before and after pictures. And we, I have the design team from planning department that will be um, presenting what they have included or created um, in the shopping center to depict. You guys all talked about it, the lack of landscaping. Um, so we did create some landscape islands in this shopping center. We changed the signage to be modern, more modern looking. We added some amenity open space in this um, shopping center, including like benches, seating areas, um, like a, a, a pocket park, and also sidewalks getting into the shopping center. We included some lighting, pedestrian scale lighting for safety and security. So I'm going to let the design team get into the presentation and tell you exactly what they have added. So the Liberty Court Shopping Center is about 85,000 square foot and it was built in 1986. Emily, are you available? Yes, I'm here. You want to take it over? Yes. So, so hi everyone. Good evening. Um, this is Dorsen Huang, and uh, we are going to present the um, uh, initial proposal based on the comments that we received from the community member uh, uh, in the previous email uh, meetings. So this is slides we will present the site plan and street view and signage and other uh, names already mentioned about uh, some um, amenities like seating, lighting, and also architectural facade. Uh, try to uh, come up with some idea based on the comments. Uh, so the next slide. So again, we still uh, just in the beginning of the pre presentation, we want to review the E16 uh, shopping centers. Um, okay, Galen, can you move the last slide? Oh, okay, sorry, about, this, sorry yeah. about that. So the existing um, parking, uh, the, the center, everybody knows about that, but we want to point out some issues that there's a simple access to the center. So you can see the red triangle, which is the three uh, main entrances. However, the KFC have the other two entrances for KFC to use, like a blue triangle. 
And then when you see the main entrance in the middle, right in there's a blue triangle, which is served for currently is a vacant building. So many of these access into the mall and uh, access to uh, Liberty Road, which will create some traffic uh, situation. And also the, you see the red dash light, which is existing sidewalks, which is, um, this, um, is uh, not connected because of this access. And also there's no sidewalk connect from the sidewalk on the Liberty Road all the way into the center. So this is uh, um, the issues. And also uh, one issue is that the parking lot is with limited landscape. So the parking lot is very extensive without any amenities. So this is a current uh, situation. So the next slide, please. So we kind of address these issues first that we would like to make a potential connectivities. So we, we kind of make the extending the sidewalk from the Liberty Road and also the old coal road into the center. So there's a street. You can see the dash line go all the way into the center. And we also incorporate with crosswalks to join uh, with sidewalk so the pedestrian can really literally walk from the Liberty Road into the, the, the center. And at the same time, we remove the access to KFC and also the immediate access to the current vacant, lot, vacant buildings and also limited three access, so in and out, so which is more, uh, more legit legitimately. And also that we consolidate the signage into two location. One is located in the middle of the entrance on the Liberty Road, and the other one will be on the old coal road. And uh, then also is a very good uh, value for this shopping center have the library uh, located on site. So we was hoping perhaps in the future or possibly can have some amenity open space, which is a complement with a library, which become a community gather place where parents or grandparents bring their kids or grandkids to library. They can also be able to have a place outside to get together, something like that. And the most important things that we incorporate the landscape island and plant trees so the way the the entire parking lot is not really just like a vacant lot or like it's just very extensive could you have like a beautifulized the the parking lot and one more thing is that we kind of extending um there's one green light along the current arcade in the shopping center which we would like to enhance walkability so we would like to extending the other somehow like a sidewalk to next to the the arcade so that way people can have the place together, sitting or hanging around, something like that. The next slide, please. So this one is going to show the close view to this, uh, the, what the other previous slide talking about the extending uh, uh, potential space next to the arcade. So this uh, belt, we call it, we, we incorporate the flower bed and also lightings and also seating and which were extending because sometimes like the arcade, the width is not really that wide enough to have some activity happen there. So we kind of adding this additional sidewalk to accommodate the possible uh, daily activity or people uh, visit to the center, they may encounter the other community member they know so they can have some place to uh, chat and sit and spend some time in the center. And so, and so we kind of move a little bit like a vehicular circulation a bit uh, to the south, create this kind of um, workable uh, space. Next slide, please. And this Im image is trying to show you how they look like. So on the left side of the image is uh, taken from the, the avenue and the white marsh. Could you, they have some like flower bed and landscape on this kinds of sidewalk. And on the left side, you can see from the sky, which is extending like a, similar to the mall, the, the mall that we was talking about, they have like a traffic circulation and then extending this kinds of cycle and go into the arcade and go into the mall. So you kind of have more wider space for a community member to spend more time or doing some 
type of activity uh, in this kinds of space. Next slide, please. And now we are going to show you certain angle of the image. So this is the current, um, the main entries in the middle, the middle main entries on the Liberty Road. So you see there's no any sidewalk connect from the Liberty Road all the way into the, the, the center. And the trees is very um, in different areas, not really organized or more in a more impact way for the, the center. So perhaps it's not really that attractive to uh, community members. And also the current sign is not really being updated or modernized. So the next slide, we are going to show you uh, the same part of the angle, but the way we present. So here we incorporate the idea that we kind of possibly any place that we can provide seating, we will have a seating and maybe in the center, they have public work. So that way can, maybe it's something, um, the, the neighborhood's identity or something in the center. So community member will feel like this is a, a, a sense of belonging and they feel like this is a center belong to their communities. And we plant the tree lie all the way into the center incorporated with sidewalk so people can walk in uh, from the Liberty Road all the way into the center and also because uh, in the pre uh, meeting a committee member mentioned about they like the other centers uh, uh, signage so we kind of incorporated that kind of idea to create one initial one and this signage is incorporated with a brick uh, in the center and the, the, the stone and the lower part, which is a community member, they outline this is kind of material they would like to have in the centers. The next slide, please. And this is another angle to show you a more close look at the signage. And here we can also see, in addition to the tree light, we also incorporate the sidewalk lighting. So could she, we will enhance like even inviting so perhaps people will be, feel more safe uh, to stay in the center especially for women or kids and then there's a, another type of lighting in the parking lot which is also make it more uh, more visible uh, for people to come to the center in the evening next slide please and this is another angle. So the, the, the lighting is not only restricted in the sidewalk. We, when there's any place we uh, is a located seating area, they will also incorporate lighting to be able uh, to continue the use of the center throughout the day. In addition to daytime, maybe in the evening, some activity happening in the center, people can also gather and for their activities. Next slide, please. And this is another view to show in, in addition to the sitting area along the Liberty Road, which maybe is adjacent to the bu uh, bus stop, but they in the center, whenever it's possible, can locate some like a small pocket park or sitting area, incorporated with uh, seating chairs or trash bin and lighting or other amenity, which can become a place a community member they would like to spend day to day in the center in addition to go shopping in the center but they also a place for them to hang around or to meet with their friends or family member members next slide please and again come back this is a showing remind everyone that this is elite is 16 uh, parking lot to look like so it's very extensive without any landscape pin and just like a as for the pavement, the next slide. Next slide, please. So here, just again, to show you that we incorporate the landscape islands and also trees and also showing the, the linear sidewalk from the leap a little on the top of right on the right top corner and to the lower part to the center. So this is sidewalk and we're sitting and also these kinds of landscape to kind of break down these kinds of purely as for the pavement, but you also kind of respond to the sustainability and also bring green and increase the greenery uh, in the centers, which is make it more, um, more usable or more welcoming and more inclusive. <laughs> 
Thank you. Next slide. And here, just some example to uh, to discuss to show that the lighting. There's a different type of lighting. So we just showcase some of the type. This is somehow the lighting can be installed in the parking lot, but it's not certainly restricted to these types because there's so many types. So we just want to show some of the examples so the community member, they can start thinking about what kinds of shape or height or lighting colors or something they would like to have in the center in their community member, a uh, community area. The next one. So the other one was the lighting for the parking lot and also for the sidewalks. There's different type of um, lighting. So you can, um, the, the first one is like a border type is much shorter and the other two and three image showing a little bit higher. So they have different various variety in height, shifts, and also the lux and also price and durabilities. So this is something uh, we, 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 we want the community member to, to think, start to think about this and maybe perhaps bring more ideas so that way we will be able to incorporate because this is center is located in your neighborhoods. It's very important to have your valued opinion and suggestions. So that way we will be able to incorporate into the design guidelines. And the next one will be about the architectural facade. So I will turn the presentation to my colleagues, Miles. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Um, so this is, the current or was current facade of the Rite Aid in the Liberty Court Shopping Center. I believe that they've removed the blue um, sort of little overhang there and they've replaced that with a new sign. Um, and as you can see currently, there's these sort of yellow ballards here that line in front of the stores, um, very minimal windows and chances for anyone, any pedestrians walking by to see in, as well as the sidewalk um, only being directly in front of the stores under the arcade. Uh, if you could go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so as you can see here, we've extended the sidewalk out from in front of the arcade so that there's more walking room as well as a sort of strip of landscaping and greenery. Um, we also incorporated seating within the front of the shopping center, as well as lighting um, for a more pedestrian level and for cars driving by. Uh, there's also lighting on the um, entablature, the roof line of the building there as well. There we also attempted to incorporate the the um, local stone that's used, as well as brick, um, two materials that were requested. Um, and you can also see the use of stone at the bottom of the columns and the walls. Uh, we've also opened up the storefront a little bit with more windows and glass so that people can see as they're walking by into the stores in the area, um, as well as some lighting underneath the arcade as well. So for safety and even for daytime visibility there. And this is just to show that the, with a few simple changes without even altering the major structure of the facade here, that the experience of the shopping center can be lifted a little bit more and be a bit more approachable and modern. Thank you, Miles. Thank you, Emily. So as you can see, we did try to incorporate the ideas that we heard so far, but um, we just also wanted to make sure that those ideas, which are your wish list, are also, um, you know, compatible or like um, comply with the zoning regulations for Baltimore County. So we have from the, um, the zoning office, we have Mr. Jeff Furlow. We have the landscape, the Baltimore County Landscape Island. We have Jim Herman. And from the Department of um, Environment and Protection and Sustainability, we have Kerry Oberholzer and also Kitty Uden. So they are all here to answer your questions. 
we have just to start the conversation. We, I'm going to ask them to talk about parking regulations for Baltimore County, climate regulations, landscape requirements, lighting requirements, amenity open space requirements, and stormwater management regulations. So the first point that I have here is parking regulations. Jeff Perlow, do you want to take that? Um, sure, yeah. Um, basically, um, they're, they're supposed to have islands of, I forget, I think it's 14, every 14 spaces. And you can see a lot of these shopping centers don't have the islands that they need. So, um, you know, they need to, if they're installed, the question then becomes, because every time they take away a um, parking space, is that making the shopping center more deficient in parking? So, yes, the islands need to be added, but the question comes up about, um, you know, do they, are they going to need a new parking variance to do that? That would be the main parking question I think we would have. Okay, um, and then for like, for example, this shopping center, which is about, um, if I remember the square footage, let me go back to the yeah. main. Yeah, if if the shopping center's um, over a hundred thousand square feet, then they can um, they can calculate the spaces at five per thousand square feet, which will make it a lot simpler, you know, for doing a calculation. If they if they're not over if they're under that amount, then we have to calculate restaurants different from retail, different from um, other uses, you know, office uses, medical offices. So hopefully the, the shopping center looks like it has enough square footage that we can do the whole shopping center at five per thousand, hopefully. Okay, so for this, for example, 85,000 square foot. Um, so the that, five foot yeah, if, if, if the whole shopping center is 85, then we may have to calculate it based on each separate use. You know, restaurants at 16 per thousand, reta retail at five spaces per thousand, um, you know, medical office at 4.5 per thousand. So it, it makes it more difficult if, if um, they're under the 100,000 square feet. Okay, okay. So in this, um, in this example, let's say that they have just what they need for parking, but then on their wish list, they have, they would like to have more parking um, uh, the islands. Right. What? So the only, the only way to have that would be to go to a variance. Well, I, I don't know. They might have excess parking already, in which case the islands won't affect the um, the required parking count. So if they have a lot, let's say they have 100 extra spaces, then, uh, then what, they're, what the law requires, then adding the islands is not going to be a problem. But if, if they're already short on parking spaces, and let's say they had a parking variance in the past, well, making it more deficient is probably going to uh, kick in a new variance if that's the case. Okay. Does anybody have any question for Jeff Perlow for parking? Yeah, I, just... I had a comment. First of all, I don't think that they're deficient on parking right now. I think they probably have excess parking given the uses now. And of course, there are a couple of businesses like where Wendy's was located. We don't know whether there's going to be an eating facility that reopens at that site or not. So in that case, how do you plan? Do you plan around what was or what might be at the in some at some point in the future? I guess one of the concerns that I had, and I did like a lot of what you've got, and hopefully all those different planters and trees and things and benches will be there. But for any benches, I hope you've also included trash receptacles. Um, my question is this: right now, just thinking about how the property is used at several points during the year, are, especially over near closer to the library, large community gatherings. I know that the Deltas have something that's outside on the parking lot and other groups have things. And so I guess um, I know that Councilman Jones is on this call and other people are as well who have participated in some of those events. And I was hoping to find out whether they felt that uh, the layout was conducive to those really large gatherings of people on the lot. 
Hello, this is Danielle Smith. Hi, everyone. So what I will say um, as a member of Delta Sigma Theta, we do have our events. We usually have anywhere from two to 300 individuals at the event for our Juneteenth celebration. It just depends on the weather. And I'm, I'm looking on here, I'm just looking at the picture on my phone. It looks like um, that everything looks fine. I mean, I, and I love the fact that they've added the greenery and everything. So what were you um, referring to, Linda? Because I do agree that there's excess parking and that shouldn't be an issue with the islands and all, but. Uh, I was looking at the greenery. There's a patch of green that's over uh, on the side of the uh, part of the library. And I was wondering, are you going to put any kind of like stand there or like I, I, like a band, a, a platform, a stage, or anything like that? Uh, there's no like common. If you had an event that was there, there's no like designated space where someone would put up a stand or a stage, a separate stage. Well, you use that. Oh, okay. So what I was going to say is usually we um, just utilize the parking lot. And oh, yeah. the county usually brings the stage out there. And of course, you know, like the fire trucks would be on the side. But basically everything is just utilizing the parking lot. And then, of course, right there next to it is Wendy's, which is no longer there, but we basically are using nothing that's um, on the ground. It's basically the parking lot area. So it looks like as long as that's not affected, and even the greenery would be, the way they have that set up would be an asset. That's what I'm saying. If if something of more permanent nature, a platform or something like that, like a like the Gwyneth Park, there's a section of the park where they have an established platform Form for mm -hmm. a set up of risers or stages or anything like that, something like that. Oh, there was one other suggestion that I might make. Um, I like the fact that you moved the sign and you're going to update the sign near the entrance. That's on one side of the entrance. If you can go back to that page. Yeah, you have that on one side of the entrance. What is that on the other side of the entrance? It says oh, public artwork. So I was going to ask if you could put, I, I didn't see the label. I was going to ask if you could put some sort of artwork. Like one of the things that people talked about was having a theme that would be consistent with the Randallstown community, especially since it's evolved as a you know middle-class African-American community. Um, and also that location is near, uh, the medical facility, the medical center. So I know that you have multiple ones of these shopping areas to develop. Do you think that each one of them could have a different theme? Like because this one is near the medical center and there's even a medical building on the corner, could you have something related to uh, African-American doctors and nurses or, or something like that that would be put up there? And at a different one, one of the people who was critical to our community was Mr. Hubert Simmons, who was one of the last of the Negro National Baseball League players. Maybe you want to do something that highlights the Negro National Baseball League and his commitment to Randallstown, the Randallstown Owens Mill area. So um, something that would be outdoor that would show that that kind of history. There's a lot of rich history and there's enough that if you have a sign on one side and artwork on the other, you could highlight through your public artwork a different theme at each shopping center. Okay, I hear I hear your idea and I'm writing them down. Are there any, um, actually my question to Jeff would be, are there any limitations on what you see here on this picture. I know it, it, it may be hard to, it may be hard to enter because you don't have all the information in front of you. Yeah, I'm, I mean, trying, yeah, okay. I'm trying to get to the picture. Okay. So in here, seeing all the landscape islands, um, 
knowing the the square footage but not knowing how many spaces they have right now just looking at this picture are there any limitations um that you may know well what one of the benefits of the library being um a, a county entity is we probably won't have to include them in the parking count so that's going to make things a lot easier um you know as, as far as doing the parking calculations because whatever the library normally would have to have we can exempt from the parking requirements um uh, being as our county uh, entity um that might help a lot on on doing the parking calculations as far as the the sign that i saw there as, l as long as it's under you know 25 foot height and it you know complies with all the other standards for signs like the sign that's there now would never would never qualify under the, under the current requirements. So if if the old sign is removed, then the new one would have to come into compliance. Yeah, you know, they would they would never permit a sign that size uh, under the current regulations. And and there is no grandfathering of old signs, so you know they they would have to come in compliance. So it has to be under twenty five foot. In the, the height, height, and then there's a limit on the number of lines. It's limited to five lines. There's a limit on the size of the lettering. Um, you know, the new regulations, which started in 1997, said that when you know grandfathered them up to 2012, after that date, any any signs that were non-conforming would lose their um, their protection basically that year. Um, I don't think code enforcement has really enforced it, but technically, a lot of those signs along Liberty Road are going to be in violation. Because if I if I remember, I think there was a, a suggestion of having the signage height based on the number of tenants for each shopping center. So you don't think that's doable? Well, I mean, I certainly think, um, you know, variances would be appropriate and, um, you know, they might have to ask for sign variances, but um, hopefully like the one you're showing there for this entrance, looks to me like it would be in compliance just from what I'm saying. Okay, good. And I think this signage um, really depicts the fact that you all wanted to have the signage material match with the facade of the shopping center, which is in brick and stone right now. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing is um, you can have one of those signs at each entrance, so they could put one on Liberty Road and one on Old Court Road and actually have two of those signs mm -hmm. okay there's one per frontage so they could have a second sign at the other entrance what about the public art on the other side on 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 the entrance are there any limitation for the zoning regulations uh, not really the, the zoning regulations doesn't really address that so i don't see that being a problem um the only question would you know make sure you stay out of the state uh, right away Delivery mm -hmm. right? You don't want to be in the state right away when you put them up. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other question for Jeff? Um, I have a, a, I don't know if it's a question or a comment, and I'm not sure if he's the one who's supposed to be answering. This is Sheila Lewis. Um, when I looked at the, the proposed plan, I think it's back a few slides, where it would show where the um, coming in and going out um, yeah, that's the one. Um, I was, and I see the arrows there, and I don't know if it means it's going to be one way or two way. But my only uh, question, well, is about coming into the center from Old Court Road and accessing the library. The way people come in, because everything is open, they just come through any open way, and it seems as though this is going to be limiting the way the people will be able to access the library that they would have to go around to one way. I don't know, maybe it's just because it's just the design there, but that's my only um, concern. So the, yeah, tri that, okay. the triangles are out for, for entering and exiting. So there's no, we are not restricting. Um, it's so not the, like a one way in or out. Okay, so the roads, and even though those roads in the parking lot area are, are showing like arrows going one way and in reality people will be able to go in both directions correct oh i see inside the parking lot yeah they really will be able to go in two in both directions because if they 
they're not, then people would have to come in, go around and come back around to the library. But it's those um, aisles between um, the parking areas, if they allow for two way traffic, won't be an issue. Yeah, I think it's just it's just an example. It's just how it was designed, but okay. we are not really um, um, showing any in or out ways here. Okay, good. That looks good. I, I love it. It's, it's wonderful. But yeah, it looks good, but we just have to make sure that it's doable for the for the for the county um you know standards and regulation. Where would you put the, the large planters and would there be any like fencing at all or cast iron fencing or anything? Right now, almost any anything is an improvement because to me that shopping center has one of the most dangerous parking lots because it is so wide open and there's nothing that stops people from soaring from one end from front to back or from side to side and there's got to be something that controls the, the traffic and if you have those mediums with the trees on them that would help a lot and if you had other large planters like one of the things i'm hoping that i'm looking at I'm seeing what appears to be trees going on along the front along Liberty Road that are visible. Hopefully you're going to put large large flower planters, like some of the things that I said to you uh, in going about uh, Chicago and uh, how they're using those large planters to beautify their streetscape. And hopefully, people just driving up and down Liberty Road, even if you never go into the shopping center, would see tree and planter, tree and planter, and just be amazed at how beautiful it is. Yes, um, we have Jim Herman, which is the landscape architect for Baltimore County. Hi, Jim. Hello, how are you doing? So, Jim, would you like to talk about landscape requirement for Baltimore County? Yeah, I'm more than happy to. Um, and and I'll, I'll actually go back to some of the islands as well, because Jeff had touched base on that as well. But one of the one of the components with regards to the landscape manual, um, when Jeff talked about the 14 parking spaces in a row and then an island, <clears throat> that is for and it's it it's uh, in the CMDP as well. But I think that's a that's a very large shopping center where you got some of the users that are 80,000 square feet individually uh, and it's kind of regimented in that in that arena when you get into most of these smaller shopping centers whenever you're talking eight eighty five thousand or something like that um, I think the driving the driving number is their requirement with regards to uh, having seven percent of the parking area which includes the drive aisles and includes a, a, a lot of the area. 7% of it is it, it, a minimum 7% is supposed to be uh, put into islands uh, for landscape plantings and that kind of stuff. So that I just kind of wanted to clarify the smaller these are, that's more of the regulation or aspect that would, would dictate the islands with respect to that. And then if you get into the stormwater management, which someone will address a lot of times whenever you got to address that a lot of times that is uh, included in those islands and they utilize those islands for stormwater management as well. With regards to the other landscape um, requirements, um, the landscape manual, if you ever want to take a look at it and it's online, it has, it's basically you can work through condition A, condition B, and on all the way through on a piece of, um, you know, a development such as this, and it's a calculated planting unit setup. So to kind of give you just an idea, and I haven't got any measurements or anything, but along Liberty Road and Old Court Road, um, that frontage would generate one planting unit per 40 linear feet if we were tar starting from scratch. Uh, so every every 40 foot of linear footage there would generate one planting unit and a general overview of the planting units are one major tree that is 30 foot or higher goes in at a two inch caliper uh, or two flowering trees 
that are one inch caliper or larger, uh, two of those to one planting unit. Evergreens are two six foot evergreens um, would equal one planting unit or five shrubs. So you'd have a adjacent road like Liberty Road and our old court. And then you'd also have what's called an interior road, which would be your main entrance going in and your drive aisles around that do not typically access parking spaces. Those would be considered interior road and those generate one planting unit per 20 linear feet. So that the adjacent road gets you the street tree calculations. The interior road gets you some of the parking uh, trees within the parking lots and some of the shrubs and that kind of stuff in there as well. And then you then you get into a calculation with regards to the parking spaces, um, one planting unit per 12 parking spaces, and then you get into other other calculations with regards to screening and other unique um, features that may be on this particular shopping center versus another another shopping center or fast food or bank or whatever it is. There's certain requirements for screening uh, of the parking from the adjacent right of way, from the adjacent commercial uh, property, residential, so on and so forth. So it's it's really a layering, a calculation that generates a number of planting units and um, the design goes into and tries to meet the spirit and intent for those areas is what it is. So that kind of gives you just kind of a you know, kind of an overview of the manual and how it's calculated. And um, can they plant more than that? Absolutely. Um, um, so that kind of gives you a broad brush on it. And it typically works out. It's it's a pretty, pretty well-rounded system when it's all said and done. Is it perfect? No. Uh, but it does work very well, uh, in my opinion, as well. So. Okay, great. So, uh, Jim, just looking at this picture on the screen, um, do you think there are any limitations? Um, what, what are you uh, referring to from a limitation standpoint? Meaning, um, are there anything that's, that, is, that will be not complying with regulations? Mm, it's it's kind of hard to tell from, from this. Um, it's kind of a big overview mm -hmm. uh it looks like it's got a lot of a lot of landscaping in it just as a general from that standpoint so, it's got a lot of so trees you... a lot of islands i would care to say that uh from a percentage standpoint it's probably o well over the seven percent okay okay that's that was my my next question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are there any questions for jim What about the amenity open space? Um, is that a requirement for shopping centers? And, and Jeff probably can talk a little bit more about this because the amenity open space is actually a zoning, uh, a zoning regulation and amenity open space. There are certain zones that are in Baltimore County that actually require amenity open space as part of the development. Um, I think, and I don't know what this is zoned per se, but that might be something that if you wanted to incorporate in your design guidelines, that might be some, that might be a way to kind of try to incorporate it, the amenity open space and a percentage of it in the Liberty Road design corridor. Um, you know, if that's, if that's something that, that, that the community wants to do and you know that 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 may be a way way to do that okay okay um jeff yes i'm here do you do you do you want to talk about the amenity open space well i i don't know the exact uh zoning classification for this shopping center but if there's a district overlay that's usually what requires amenity open space if it's just a straight up bl bm or br zone without the you know without the ct district or or some other district overlay mm -hmm. then the amount of the open space might not even be required in this case okay yeah i have a question uh mildred owens yes um in the areas i i 
I like a lot of what, what you have here, but in the entrance going into the, the shopping center area, is that possible to have a traffic light there? Yeah, this is a picture where the car yeah. is. Is so it this possible is, to have a traffic this light? Because this, it's hard to get in and out sometimes not going in because you you know you're on the right but if you're on the left it, it's hard to get into the shopping center area and I, I think that should, that should be true for most that should be a light at each one of those shopping center areas where if the traffic is backed up coming in or going out you can always have a way to get out and not just sit there for some long distance of time um that was that was one of my questions the other one was um the when you talk about the planners are you speaking you know can you kind of clarify as are you talking about the the planners that are supposed to be 40 feet apart are they are they flowers what kind of you know how 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 is the the plant holder, what kind of plant holder are we speaking about? Are you talking about this picture over here? Yes. So this yeah, is I mean, this what I was going to say is the, the calculation is one planting unit per 40 linear feet. So that's 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 the conduit by which it generates a parking or a, a planting requirement. And typically, you know, along the Liberty Road and Old Court, that would generate uh, street tree type plantings, um, not specific planters or anything like that. It's more, it's more to create the street trees and the street tr street tree effects. There, um, they would typically be at grade. Uh, they may be in a landscape strip. They, you know, if you had a wider, I don't think you have a wide sidewalk there or anything you've seen them where you've got uh grates over them and they come come out of out of squares in the concrete um i think here it'd probably be more like you've got you've got your curb and depending upon the state highway section you may have the sidewalk and then you may have them planted behind it uh, is probably most likely what it is and when when i'm talking about landscaping requirements and everything i don't the requirements aren't there to have planter boxes or raised planters or anything like that when it comes to the actual landscape manual. Um, I know if you come into Towson, I know the there was a, a, a group in Towson that um, I think they got a grant or something and they they put planters um throughout a number of the streets in Towson and put shrubs in them and that kind of stuff and that's in addition to the street trees that are there um but from the landscape manual there's nothing uh nothing in there with regards to planters specifically um could, could, you know. we, so it wouldn't be prohibited to to actually have the the planters say in front of each store maybe not each one but maybe so so many uh, to to help beautify the the front the front part of the store with the flowers in it. Yeah, I think I think those are all options, but I think they're more on the uh, a group or a private sector type um, uh, approach because of the maintenance and the watering and that everything that goes along with it. I think it's uh, like the Towson stuff. I know that's um, uh, it's a it's a group or uh, and I wish I could remember the name. I, I just don't know who I don't remember who it is, um, but there was a group that took it upon themselves um, to provide that or or get behind that and and see see to it that it gets done and and I, I assume they continue to maintain it and in fact I, I I noticed that they actually got somebody that's going around now periodically um, they were black they were about four foot long and 
a uh, foot and a half wide and they have have some uh, young lady that's there and actually planting each or not planting but painting each one of them with different types of I don't know if you call it a theme but different types of artwork and I know there's at least five or six of them that I know have been planted uh, or painted excuse me painted and I think it's all um, private private money or, or or some group that's behind it that's doing that it's not it, it's it's not part of the landscape manual or you know if you if you had a um, a shopping center owner that wanted to do that and that was their theme like you had mentioned earlier the theme uh with the um the baseball player or whatever you know all that stuff is possible but it's more it's not a requirement from 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 the landscape manual aspect so i had i then i thought that i had finished having all the questions that i did for mr herman <laughs> <laughs> because and Goni, i've got to ask you this question Goni, did you share with him the chicago project that's not done by private citizens that is the local government who has made the decision, we are going to beautify this area. I thought this whole project was how we get around and go away from shortchanging Randallstown. I thought that's why we were meeting. I thought we were going to go beyond the bare minimum required in this book and that book. I thought that's the reason that we were stuck with a very unattractive Randallstown now because everyone always gave us all these years the bare minimum. I asked for something different. The other members of the community asked for something different. A beautified, upscale, upgraded Randallstown. Not what was by the book. I specifically asked about flowering plants that would be along Liberty Road that would beautify the area and a theme for each one of the shopping areas and, and other considerations as well. For example, when I say other considerations, I'll bring up again. The county is under an obligation to go solar, to have reusable energy. I love what I see, but at some point before all of these meetings are over, are we going to talk about how what you're developing is going to fit in with our requirement that we make a whole bunch of that stuff solar, especially that big public building sitting there on the corner? Because all the public buildings are supposed to be solar. All of them are supposed to be reusable energy, okay? Not to mention other private ones are supposed to have that built in with an option. And we're running out of years to get this done. We're halfway through the years that we have to get it done. So let's not forget any of that. Thank you. And Ms. Dorsey, this is Jim. Ms. Dorsey, this is Jim Herman. Uh, from that standpoint, design guidelines, that that's what this whole process is about. So I think that's that's why we're doing what we're doing from that standpoint. And that's the items that have to be or can be incorporated in it that elevate elevate that the community. So I I'm just that's I was just giving you what the historic aspect is and what's in the manual and what those requirements are and i think the whole idea behind behind the design uh and a plan is to do just what you're talking about and Gene, i throw that back to you then thank you jim i have another question about the lighting if you don't mind uh, i i had i like the lighting that i saw um, that you showed on here and but the thing is one you had it was sort of dark and you could see that that those lights really lit up but the other lights that I, I I saw they were not you couldn't tell because see just just seeing those lights during the day you can't tell how they're going to look at night they really fool you that's why a lot of the shopping centers are dark now so can you show the pictures of each one in the dark so we can kind of get an idea of even though it might be something beautiful we like, we don't know if that's something we would like to select because we don't know how it's going to look when it's dark. 
So okay, so uh, I think I I was cut off um, because of my internet. For the first part, I didn't hear what you were saying. Are you talking about showing you lighting in the dark versus during the day? Yeah, I mean it, it's good to show, show them, but you had there's one on there that a uh, set of lights I really like because everything was really bright and nice looking, felt safe, and 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 um, but the other two sets of lights. I didn't get a good feel about whether it would be it would cover the darkness at night because so a, a lot of time you see a lot of lights in the in the in the parking area like this you can see how light that is but the, I think there was one or two others that were shown you couldn't tell I could not I couldn't tell whether or not it would have the same brightness as these lights oh, okay. in order so to these, these yeah, are just examples. Know. It's just example to show you um, that we are hearing what you guys are saying and that yeah. we are trying to depict those ideas into these design scenarios just to show you what we heard so far. And all of these, um, like for this shopping center was built in the 80s. Um, mm. Let's put the design guidelines on the side. If this shopping center was to be developed now, you would have to follow the zoning regulation. And the zoning regulation speaks um, in terms of landscape islands. So the landscape islands requirement or the landscaping requirements are already in the zoning regulation. Um, the, the signage standard, the signage regulation, um, parking, all of that is already in the Baltimore County zoning regulation. If this the uh, shopping center was to be developed now today. So anything that's design guidelines that we have to draft will have to be something extra on top of the zoning regulation. Like for example, the amenity open space, like Jeff said, amenity open space is only required in shopping centers under certain zoning types like overlay. Um, if you want to have amenity open space in all the shopping centers on Liberty Road, that will have to be a um, something that will that we will have to ask and draft in the design guidelines and ask if developers will allow X number of acres in the shopping center to be dedicated to amenity open space. The lighting is the same thing. We already have lighting standards and regulations in the Baltimore County that says, um, are there anybody, Jeff, can you talk about lighting regulations? Um, I, I, actually, I believe that's in the landscape manual, but um, from what I understand, the, the attempt is to put the lighting on the same islands with the trees, but Jim could probably uh, answer that better than I could. Yeah, from the lighting standpoint, from the zoning zoning regs and the regulations, there's very limited amount of regulations with respect to lighting, um, and it, it it depends upon what um, what the the uh, product is, and it and the products continue to become better and better with respect to that. There's different levels of light. There's different colors of light, if you will. Um, uh, mostly with what I do is I, I review the lighting plans, but I, I, I review from the standpoint of lighting trespass. Um, and there's only a few, few um, uh, references with regards to candles and uh, requirements with respect to that. There's a few... Uh, uh, comments with respect to the heights in certain zones, um, but it's really, really limited uh, with respect to the the design specifics um, from the lighting standpoint. I was thinking, um, thank you for that information, but I was thinking too that I guess I think about the people that I see in wheelchairs coming out of the grocery stores and the during the day, it looked like it's a whole lot of light, but at night, you can't even see them when they're trying to put stuff into their the back of their cars or something. And then they got to 
you know, you, you can't hardly see them and they could be taken advantage of. And I think that it, uh, one shopping center that I went to, it was really amazing how they had those clear lights where it just lit up all around those, especially the uh, handicap or disability areas. And and to have a light and they can't see and they, and they can't defend themselves, you know, if something should come up or even if they should fall, nobody could hardly see them because it's dark around those areas when you get, when you're getting in the cars. So I was saying that was that was the concept that I was talking about and had mentioned before that the disability areas that all of it should be lit up, but especially those areas and the people in wheelchairs and they are trying to move grocery and open the doors and put stuff in the trunks. You know that that's consideration. I was thinking of, and I was thinking of the same vein with the um, the beautiful planners and the seating areas where that people can mangle and feel comfortable and talk to the neighbors and so forth like that. Um, but that's that's mainly, and it's, I don't I don't know if I got an answer about the street lights. Um, the traffic lights that should be, you know, in the in the front of each shopping center area to go and come out of. Is that a you know is that something we can do? Well, the the county's going to have limited um, jurisdiction there because it's a state highway. It'll be more to approve a, a traffic light at that entrance would require approval of the state highway administration. Well, they do they do work with the county on those things, but um, they would be the ultimate ones that have to prove it. Um, Mr. Perlow, um, yeah. Mr. Perlow, I'm here. Yes, um, I had raised something at the first meeting, and I believe in killing two birds at one stone. I brought up the need, the um, need for us as a county to move toward our requirement that we start developing reusable energy. And I'm looking at an awful lot of light fixtures. And I brought up the fact that there is at least one company here in Baltimore County that has developed solar lighting that's way more powerful and at pennies on the dollar cost to run that could provide a mixed use of, see, I believe in bring the new technology in with the new things, features that you're talking about. Why not use a Baltimore County company that's developed that kind of specialized lighting and those, those lighting fixtures along Liberty Road? They've been looking for years for a place to pilot. And this would be a great opportunity if we're going to add in all these additional Additional power, uh, powerful lighting, and it's work during all kinds of weather. So when everyone else's power goes out, that, that shopping is solar uh, lighting. Day and night, you'd have lighting. Um, anybody else, yeah. please, yeah. could you mute um, so that we can hear Miss Linda? Miss Linda, I wasn't able to hear what you said last. I, you couldn't hear anything that I said? I, I did hear everything that you said. And you talked about there is one company in Baltimore County that has done. They're just in the Timonium area. Yeah. Okay. Cromwell Bridge Road. And um, I've asked if a delegation of people who were in the planning department would go out there. I've got a video of what they do. And it is impressive stuff that no one else has got, state of the, the art, science, technology that no one else has got. And one of the things that they do is solar lighting of the sort that we're talking here. It would provide lighting, sufficient, powerful lighting for uh, when the power goes off, day, night, and for pennies on the dollar versus what we currently pay for every single street light that operates. So I wish you all would consider that. I'd be more than glad to share with you where they are. And I think you all should at least go visit them. They're right up the street, less than like a mile and a half from Towson to see 
what they've got. I'm talking about that kind of lighting. Yeah. And 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 I do I do hear you well, and we are working on. It. Um, so this is just an example of what the lighting could look like, but the lighting could also be solar. So we are working on it. Um, I heard you well last time. I heard you well again this time. Um, we are on it. And Gene, it's Jim Herman again. Um, one of the things that I think there, from a lighting standpoint, um, I think there's there's more uh, requirements from the building code that are out there. Not, not that familiar with the building code and their safety safety uh, levels of light and that kind of stuff. And I'm not familiar with the specifics that uh, I think it was Miss Miss Owens Owens was talking about. But I, I, there are some requirements with regards to that aspect, but I'm not that familiar with them. And again, I, I look, I, I review for the lighting trespass and uh, from that standpoint, I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you, Jim. Uh, so may, I ask Jim may I ask Jim what the definition of, of lighting trespass is? What does that mean? <clears throat> uh, whenever a say a development like this, um, they actually are required to, uh, new development, re redevelopment, they're required to provide what, what is called a, a lighting photometric plan. And it basically uh, takes their lights, they got specific lights that they're proposing, and they provide a photometric plan that shows the actual lighting in foot candles um, and what I'm looking at is the right-of-way lines and the property lines, uh, and them taking their light, their private lights, and what the spillage is or trespass is into the public right-of-way or onto adjacent properties. And to kind of give you an idea, what I'm looking at, um, is, <clears throat> excuse me, if you got a commercial piece of property, um, and it's got lights on it. I'm looking at equal to or less than one foot candle along the right of way lines and the adjacent commercial property lines. Uh, if it's commercial and it's adjacent to residential, I'm equal. Uh, I'm looking at equal equal to or less than a half a foot candle at those property lines from between a commercial and a and a residential uh, type development. Um, and what I'm referring to whenever I talk about the zoning manual, uh, there's one section in there um, that references 0.2 foot candles whenever you've got a commercial development that's adjacent to what's called a residential transition area, which a transition area between a higher, higher use and the residential product that's there. So that's what I'm looking for, the private, um, the private lights and what kind of light they're generating and that they're not trespassing a lot of excess light from their property on somebody else's or into the right of way. That's 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 what I'm talk that's what I'm referring to whenever I talk about lighting trespass. Thank you for the wonderful explanation. Okay, there. so we are about ten minutes away, um I mean ten minutes before the end of the meeting and I want to give um an opportunity to Priti and Kerry from Environment Protection and Sustainability to talk about the stormwater management regulations. Ah, yeah, so um, stormwater management uh, is basically divided into two categories. You basically have new development and redevelopment. Um, looking at this site here, uh, it most likely would be redevelopment. Uh, of course, until the design is tightened up, um, that that will have to be revisited. But it looks like redevelopment. What that means is basically that uh, only water quality uh, is required. If it was new development, you would have other additional requirements that would go along with that. But again, um, 
this is just kind of broad strokes uh, based on the uh, general regulations, not really site specific. Um, because just looking at a plan view here, it would be hard to pin that down. Uh, in terms of uh, redevelopment requirements for stormwater management, um, let's say it, it were to apply for this site here, there are different options of how you can provide stormwater management. Um, there are different products you can use uh, to provide stormwater management. One of them would be the, what we call a water quality inlet, where you can actually plant a tree um, within that that inlet where the tree would be part of the part of a system that provides water quality uh, to treat the water getting to it uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the regulations the overall regulations that baltimore county abides by is basically state regulations from mde which is maryland department of environment so we follow their guidelines in terms of uh, what type of facilities um, are required to provide stormwater management, what type of plantings goes into those facilities, uh, what type of uh, maintenance uh, is required for each facility. All that is um, enforced by uh, the Maryland Department of Environment. And that's what we, we follow. Thank you, Kriti. Um, I have a question for you. Let's say there is a stormwater management easement. Could you beautify that with flowers? No, you you would not be able to add any more plantings in within the stormwater management easement. That's basically um, listed in the guidelines because MD has strict guidelines in terms of what you can plant and cannot plant within a stormwater management facility within a stormwater management easement. So we have to abide by those those guidelines. You can't just uh, plant uh, anything you wish, uh, even to beautify it. Uh, we have to abide by those guidelines. Okay, I see. Are there any questions for Mr. Kriti? Any questions regarding stormwater management? Is there any fencing around those easements to make sure that nothing happens so that garbage or vandalism occurs? Is there any kind of cast iron fencing around it to protect it or? Well, it, it would depend on the type of facility. If it's just um, type of facility and size of facility with uh, also, you will be looking at the type of slope uh, basically going into the facility. All that comes in, into, into play basically into deciding or requ I should say requiring a fence or, or not. So the depth, the slope and the size. For something uh, such as the shopping center here, uh, the, the, depending on the requirements, um, once the designs are finalized, uh, it would probably make more sense to go with those water quality inlets where mm -hmm. you can actually plant a tree in there. It just functions functions as a regular inlet. Then you don't have to worry about any fencing or anything like that because it's it's just a regular uh, structure with a with a tree in it. Any other question? Yes, on uh, question regarding with parking is Not that is, um, the 
but it's not back to the shop in front of there's a, a side a large side businesses and so that I guess like the bank, um, MT Bank. I'm a part of all the money, um, but Here's an observation, Ms. Garnet. Yes. Here's an observation. I think what we heard is a description of something that occurred as a consequence of development in Howard County versus our challenge here is redevelopment in Baltimore County in Randallstown. So conceptually, as I'm trying to speak, visualize the explanation of that area about, about which I have some knowledge that was developed with that in mind with a lot of open space. Mm -hmm. Here we're limited to the acreage and 85,000 square footage and the parking lot as we know it. So our challenge is to redevelop rather than develop. And also if we're talking about parking away from the shopping center, I can't imagine a place where people can park beyond the shopping center itself because you have to cross. There's no other land nearby that's available for something that I'm hearing conceptually. That's my comment. Yes, I'm, yeah. I just have to have a picture. Yeah. 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 see what I'm talking about. I'm, you know, watching the people in that certain area. Oh, I'm Okay. You know what Mr. Plymouth just said? I was looking at one of the pictures, the graphics that you showed earlier of White Marsh. Um, they have a whole lot more distance for their sidewalk in front of each store. You don't have cars that are literally parked along the sidewalk four feet in front of the door to the store because they have, as we're seeing now, much a much mm -hmm. deeper walk. Wouldn't an alternative be just as he said, they've already planned that whole design that they have out in Columbia, but would it be possible to widen 
the width of the sidewalk along the whole circle so that you have more frontage and people are literally not four feet from your door. And I think in one of the picture, um, the design, we are trying to depict that in here, this green area along the building is what Emily was trying to explain that that that's what he's proposing. He's proposing a green area over here between the building and the parking lot. And the green area can be, uh, these are the example of the green area. So planters, landscape islands between the building and the parking lot. Will it be that wide? We can discuss how wide it will be, how wide you would like it to be. But in this picture, this is what we are trying to um, to to um, to depict based on all your recommendations and ideas so far. It's seven thirty one. So the next meeting is in January. So between now and then, I will wait the minute. <laughs> I will share with you everything that we um that we talked about today. Um we wow. were supposed to discuss in details more ideas for architectural character. We didn't have time. So we'll do that next meeting, which is scheduled for January 13, 2020. And at that meeting, we'll also talk about landscaping and signage more in detail. And in the meantime, hopefully we'll have more, um, we'll have um, some overview of um, how we can include environment practices into the design guidelines. Excuse me, this is Sheila Lewis. I just wanna make sure I'm clear. Even though we're talking about this particular um, shopping center, we're, we're still talking about ideas and guidelines proposal for all the other shopping centers also, is that correct? It is correct. We only chose one so that we could show you everything that we heard so far. So we okay. wanted to show you the before and the after pictures um, with from your ideas. But this is just one example out of the eight. Okay, of thank you. How, how it could look like. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any questions? Just happy holidays, everybody. Yes, happy Thank you. Yes. Same to you. All right. Everybody be safe. God bless. Thank you for a great participant has left the meeting. Thank you for a great raven. It was raven. Left the meeting. Has left the meeting. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. This is very chatness. Has left the meeting. Everybody have a wonderful holiday and please keep your guards up. Yeah. Uh, COVID is still here and uh, doing a number on our community. So please, please continue to do everything you've been doing in terms of social distancing and uh, wearing masks to protect you and your family. Oh, I was going to say. The worst is yet to come. I was just saying, and Kona, did we ever think in terms of what if any of these restaurants open and we ask